Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Caravan of Garbage, where we're making our way through the Tom Holland Spider-Man trilogy. Aye! Like the face he makes at the end. You know the movie? That's what he does. Although, you know, you can't see his face. No, but it's definitely happening. He's not as expressive yet as, like, an Andrew Garfield. Oh, you okay. Know, we're, you know, we're in the Garf Naissance. Yeah, sure. With Andrew Garfield, and he, you know, and, and, and those movies aren't very good. No. But he's good. He's got that theatrical vibe to him and he moves in a very expressive way and he you can you know he's a long-limbed fellow as well that's true yeah 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 yeah. you think tom holland physically yes he's short and stout (laughs) like a teapot here's a spider-man teapot from the internet (laughs) we found one available for purchase presumably that's right uh please leave a like because we are looking at spider-man he's gone to europe that's right and let me tell you mason when they get on that flight and they're like oh my god an eight hour flight to venice that's an absolute bullshit flight. I flew to Venice from Melbourne. Oh, yes? I'm still on that flight. Wow. That was in 2008, Mason. My goodness. That flight. So you missed Iron Man. I missed it. Wow. Actually, I did see Iron Man in Rome that year. That's a true story. Huh. Subbed or dubbed? I, I, I basically went around Rome for one of the days I was there uh-huh. looking for a cinema that would do it in English, and I found one, Mason. That's terrific. And they had an intermission. Love that. Where I got an espresso and a, a big pizza pie. Sorry, you got a what? An espresso? <laughs> yes. All right. Shut up, Mason. Okay. Anyways. Anyway, far from home. First of all, all these titles are too confusing. What's happening I here? I hate them. Yeah. Every time we go, what are we recording next week? Oh, home. Oh. Call it European vacation. Yes. Mm. Unbelievable. Mm. Though I will say this, because I hadn't seen this since it came out in cinemas. I wasn't really super interested in going back to it. It's pretty fun. It's a fun one. I think so too, yeah. Great villain. Come and get him. Great Spider-Manning. Great villain, James. Don't you mean great hero? (laughs) Remember when they tried to trick us? Yeah. Or maybe the internet was ablaze and it's like, oh no, maybe they've changed it. Not everything in the MCU is exactly like the comic books. Maybe Mysterio. (laughs) Maybe that guy with the big fishbowl head who sprays green smoke everywhere he goes. (laughs) Maybe he's a good guy. Maybe he will actually be a good guy in this. Maybe that's the trick. Maybe that's Mysterio's trick. He'll be a good guy. He'll be a hero in this. Yeah. What the f- He's not, is no. he? No. Why, why would you think that? And the other thing is, the first trailer for this was released in January of 2019 when Spider-Man was canonically dead. Mm, so after, it, after Infinity War, yeah. So it spoiled that a little bit, didn't it? Well, maybe the MCU isn't exactly like the comic books and maybe he would stay dead and Spider-Man Far From Home would be about the big hero Mysterio. Could be. That's right. Even though Spider-Man is in the trailer. But maybe that's Ben Riley. It's from the <laughs> comics. But you don't do everything like the comics. Maybe Mysterio cloned Spider-Man earlier and he would turn him into Ben Riley. There's all, there's all, it's all references from the comics. It's all different in universes, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Anyway, Tony Stark is sort of back in the sense that he's dead but he left Spider-Man a fleet of killer drones for some reason. I mean, Just shut that down. If, you, if you're dying, if yeah. you die, you have a little thing that says, if my heart stops, the drones all explode. What are you doing? No matter where they are on Earth, they <laughs> Doesn't all matter. explode. <laughs> but I mean, is I think that's... The a le- psycho in death. You would think that, oh, the legacy is, you know, the, the wisdom he passed down to Peter Parker. No, the legacy is the satellite full of killer drones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That was what he was like in life, and that's how he'll remain in death. Yeah, fair Just enough. Just circling the globe, delivering death <laughs> to people who don't deserve it, like school kids and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you don't think that guy deserved it because he was a bit of a bully? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, drone striking. And he was pretty handsome, and he was trying to be like, trying to be kissing MJ, but that's not his responsibility. No, that's true. He's not the main character, and he should know he's not the main character. <laughs> don't yeah. stay in your lane. Stay in your lane supporting characters, which I liked about this. Yep. Everybody has a fun little side story. Story. Again, I think that works with the teen movie angle. I think that was a lot of fun. You know, we get um, we get Ned and Betty, and they they're having that whirlwind romance in the background. I thought that was fun. Mm-hmm. Martin Starr's teacher is having a, a series of mental breakdowns because his wife faked her death during the blip. <laughs> yep, that's a bit of fun. Uh, JB Smooth thinks everything is the result of witches. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A lot of fun, which is not incorrect a lot of the time in this universe. It's true, actually. Yeah. Well, speaking of Mysterio, again, another villain created by Tony Stark. Mm. Who we see bopping around in the background in a few scenes, That's actually. That's fun. They should do that all the time. Put him in different movies? I mean, him or any new villain. Just yeah. put him in the background. Absolutely. That guy who tells Spider-Man to do a flip, make him a villain. <gasps> well, he, did that, he did that flip too good. You embarrassed me <laughs> in front of my friends. I'll get my revenge one way or the other. Absolutely. I do like everything that they're doing with Mysterio in this. Again, like you said, not everything has to be exactly like the comics, and this is that. Certainly because it's Jill and Hall. It's yeah. Jake. It's super handsome, super charismatic Jake Gyllenhaal. Mm-hmm. Whereas in the comic books, he's normally like a 
is a freak. A grubby SFX guy. Yes, exactly. Yuck. A real loser. Yeah. Why else would he put the fishbowl on his head? Yeah, exactly. You know, not clean it. A dirty fishbowl. You just lick the inside. Yeah, of it. it's oh, fine. yeah, that's a good point. But yeah, I mean, and and you know, that's what you want to do in this universe if you want to convince Peter Parker and the world at large that you are you are a hero from another universe. Got to be handsome. Yep. Got to have that designer stubble. Yep. Got to look good in a turtleneck. Got to look good. Looking yeah. sinister in the background. I like how his look and his story borrows a lot of like iconography from other superheroes. There's some Doctor Strange style like glyphs in his yeah uh-huh. smoke sure, magic. Sure, sure. He's got like an Asgardian kind of cape. Like Captain America, he's like a soldier from his world from another time or yeah, whatever. Cool. You know? he shouldn't, it shouldn't be green smoke, though. You don't that's think so? The, that's the clue that he's evil. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Should have been... A less sinister smoke. Yes, like yellow. Yellow smoke's good. Yes, yellow smoke. Exactly. Anyway, Jake Gyllenhaal, he's really good in this because he is convincing as like this stoic, heroic villain. You know, he's got the look as mentioned and all of that. And then the moment when he turns, when Peter Parker leaves the bar after he gets all the killer drones that Tony Stark left him. Just crazy. Yeah. <laughs> really good. <laughs> Bringing back a little of that Nightcrawler vibe. You oh, know? yeah, absolutely. Not Marvel Nightcrawler, the different Nightcrawler. People would Some think- people watching these videos haven't seen any other movies, <laughs> but there's a movie called Nightcrawler that he's in. Yeah, it's X-Men 2, yeah, I've seen it. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking I'm about. I'm one of those people, Mason. I haven't seen other oh, movies. No. But I loved how his team... It's basically like a visual effects unit. Yeah, yeah. And they're made up of former Stark employees. And Ralphie from A Christmas Story. Oh my God, is it first Iron Man? I saw that in Rome, Mason. I know you did. So I love that, but I was kind of hoping they'd point to more people and we'd recognise them from previous movies. Yeah, right. Because it's just him. That's true, And then like, this is so-and-so from whatever. And it's like, I don't know her. And this is Pepper Potts. (laughs) What am I doing here? I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, I I just think that idea of Mysterio being a team of people. Oh, you could have got a Stan Lee cameo in there. Oh, my God. Well, you couldn't. We'll talk about why. You died. But but just the idea that to make something like this come to life, it's difficult. You need a team of, like, 20 people to make this happen. You could do it? I could do it. You reckon you could do it? Yeah, I reckon I could do it. With enough green smoke and a big enough fishbowl for your dumb head? It's all about misdirection. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, the illusion stuff is, it's just terrific. Mm. And I mean in terms of, I know it's like we're in a Marvel hologram universe that doesn't make any sense. Sure. But I mean visually when he traps Spider-Man in that that weird illusion, Mm -hmm. it's just very good. And a lot of stuff from the comics that you might see and there's zombie Tony Stark Mm, and he's in his head at one point. It's, It's great. It's snow globes within snow globes. Oh my god, that's too many. I think there should have been just one shot of Spider-Man just flailing wildly in just a... <laughs> a regular environment. Just a, just a spare room. Just a <laughs> and I will say this as well. I know you think Tom Holland doesn't flail enough. He's not as flaily as Andrew Garfield. How can you get a teapot to flail? It doesn't work. <laughs> you hammer it out a bit. You flatten it out. It can, oh, okay. It's got a bit of wiggle to it. Mm. In this movie, he's more like a mocha pot though. The okay. traditional, the traditional uh, coffee maker Would you put of, an of espresso in that? First of all, mocha pots don't even make espresso, James. It's similar, but not the same. I don't drink coffee, Mason. I'm, I'm just built differently. I drink a lot of coconut sugar instead. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think Tom Holland's performance in this is really good. Like, mm. he gets totes of motion this, you he know, does get multiple totes emotion. times. Yeah. And I believe that. I mean, Andrew Garfield can get totes of motion when he dropped his girlfriend off a clock or whatever happened in that movie. Yep. But I think Tom Holland has given him a run for his money here. I can't believe I dropped my girlfriend off a clock. <laughs> I'm real beat up about it. I mean, he didn't drop her, but he didn't catch her. Yeah, you know? yeah, I would have yeah. caught her. Yeah. I know you would have. Yeah, yeah, it's all about misdirection. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm going to catch her over here and... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, no, I know you had thoughts on the suit last week in terms of it's blue and red and black. Yeah, I don't like that. But this time around, he's got a new suit. He makes it. Well, he's got so many new suits. He's got the Iron Spider suit, oh, obviously, that he keeps in a little beehive. Yeah. It's all buzzing away. No, that's from the movie uh, The Endgame that came out before this, actually. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This trilogy happens. There's Spider-Man at school, and then Spider-Man goes to space and disappears for five years, and there's a world-ending <laughs> cataclysmic disaster, and then he comes back, and then he goes to Europe. That's exactly right. Would you keep that in your closet? Just this buzzing Iron Spider nanite no. suit? It's just, it just looks like it's <laughs> trying to hammer its way out of this thing, and it's filled with... T- Tentacles and instant kill modes and all sorts of stuff. You don't even know what's in there. No. no. And it would be buzzing. It'd be buzzing all It'd night. It'd be buzzing, wouldn't it? Yeah. You'd put a sheet over it, but the sheet would get hot. Yeah. Probably. And you're like, is that going to start a fire? <laughs> yes. God. Look, I like I like his night monkey suit, his yep. stealth mode suit. He doesn't really need to bring the Spider-Man suit over to Europe. 
No, but he we, doesn't use it, does but he? But we need scenes where he's in the suit talking to Mysterio, so... Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And we need the visual gag where the, the customs person opens the... And says, Mamma mia, you can't bring a banana into Italy. We don't That's do right. that here. That's right. Did you know that? Don't have bananas in Italy. That's true. Wow. Well, you haven't been. You don't know. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> That's yeah, all I Yeah, oh, God. <laughs> Has, has this all been leading up to this? Yeah. Just you talking about how you went to Italy that time? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's great. Yeah. Well played. <laughs> it's all about the misdirection. I thought I was part of a YouTube channel that talks about movies and comic books and TV shows, but you were just tricking me into doing that. So Sweet to do about, this. Yeah, wow, that's incredible. You're yeah. a real Mysterio. Absolutely. So we got his night monkey suit, and then he builds his own, well, builds. He tells the machine to build. <laughs> yes, a, uh, that's right. A black and red. He calls iron. his dad's friend, <laughs> yes. who brings his private jet <laughs> with all the stuff in it, and he says, "Build me another one that's even better." Yeah. Oh, you've got options here. That one. That one's good. Pretty much the same one, except it's a it's red and black now. Yeah, exactly. The colours of the Essendon bombers. He oh said. Oh my god, please, yes, please. I think also, as always, though, Happy Hogan is a great inclusion in this. Agreed. He's just a lot of fun every time he pops up, and, mm-hmm. and this is no exception. He even gets a little bit of a run around, you know, which he's known to do. Yeah. They let him do that every now and then. That's right. And he, you know, of course he, you know, he gets a, he gets a little romance. You know, he feels pity yeah. for that old hag, Aunt May. Oh, hideous. God, and he's like, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I could be the new surrogate dad to this boy. Yeah. That my horrible f- aunt. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> This bit aside, this is where they really lean into, like, we've made a mistake casting the objectively incredibly beautiful Marissa yeah. Tomei in this role as a, a, someone who's supposed to be a, like a... like A, a withered a, old crow. A, sh- a shriveled up old lady. <laughs> so they're like, well, put her in, like, big grandma glasses and, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, out-of-style clothes. And no, it's not going to work. No. There's nothing you can do. You can put a You're going to have to kill her. Yeah, you've got to have to. You can put a pair of knitting needles in her hand. It's not enough, I'm afraid. Mm. Yeah. They'd be like, she's serving knitting needles. <laughs> Absolutely. I think also the the finale, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. where it's Spider-Man fighting a million billion drones. Yes. You'd think that wouldn't be as interesting as it actually is. It's, mm. it's a lot of fun and he's overwhelmed and trying to make his way through this. Not just the illusions, but all of those have machine guns, etc. That's true, yes. That's great. And mm. just their confrontation on the... You know, on that bridge at the end. And I love before the fight, he's just like, look, he's just a guy. If I could just get to him, I can just hit him. I hit him one time. Yeah. He's a man. Now, he has control of Edith, the, the killer satellite, the killer Stark Industries murder satellite. Mm. Maybe I could borrow one of Stark Industries' other murder satellites. <laughs> Maybe I could just do murder satellite versus murder satellite. Absolutely. That's you know? a great idea. I, I bet Stark Industries has one of those ones where they just drop the big iron bar out of out of space. Oh, okay. like... <laughs> Just into London. Just, just kinetic energy just <laughs> blows up London. And then, you know, what? Mysterio's in there somewhere. You get him. Just drop one of those. Or maybe just launch the 50 Iron Man suits that are, that are just in yeah, the archive. I don't exactly, know. Exactly, yeah. Anyway, wait, look, we can't go down that road because that's every one of these movies. They were busy. Well, they say that in that in this movie, <laughs> don't they? Yeah. All the Iron Man suits were busy blowing up other supervillains in other places around the world. Exactly. Now, there's a couple of twists at the end of this. There's fake Nick Fury, fake Maria Hill situation. Mm -hmm. And there are a few hints in this movie that, like, this is not the real Nick Fury because he clearly doesn't know what he's doing and they hand wave it away as being like, well, he was snapped and, you know, he wouldn't be caught up. But that being said, after watching Secret Invasion, the regular Nick Fury would probably handle this about the same. (laughs) He has lost his edge. Doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think that show really just points out that he never really had it and he just had a bunch of scrolls everywhere, really, right? Yeah, I guess. That was his thing. That's really very disappointing. Yeah, it is. And the other one, of course, is there's the identity reveal. Whoa. It's kind of like in uh, Iron Man 2008 when he's like, I am Iron Man or whatever. Oh, yeah. When I saw that in Rome. It's kind of like that, but it's thrust upon him. You know, much like the responsibility of being a superhero is thrust upon him by Iron Man. Whoa. There's some parallels there. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mind. you don't mind? No, I don't mind. You let him get away with it this one time? Yeah. And, of course, the return of J.K. Simmons. Yeah, delightful. exactly, yeah. Uh, it doesn't really get any play in the next one, really? No, not particularly. It's a shame. I mean, he's in it. Do you think the um, the lack of hair, does that detract from the J.K. Simmons-ness of it all? No. Because they clearly did it very last minute, and they're like, no time for makeup. We're going to shoot this in a cupboard, you know. <laughs> sure, yeah. This is a big like secret. Like we do all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With everything. But apparently him coming in, like, didn't miss a beat. Just was, like, straight back into character. and Totes profesh. I mean, how do you, you know, how do you replace him? You know, I feel like they had the same problem with the Garfield movies. 
the Bill Murray ones. <laughs> yeah, sure. And also the... They're exactly the same problem with <laughs> yeah. the Garfield movies. <laughs> and the previous Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies. They just ended up not casting him because they're just yeah, like, how right. do we top this? We I don't. Th- you know, that's true. Uh, look, at the time, I think somebody suggested get Mark Maron. I oh, think that would have worked. Like that. But I think that's more niche. I, don't, I think... Yeah. Like that, I think... I heard I, Ice Cube at one point. Yeah, right. I think that would absolutely work, but I think it does... Like, I think a certain percentage of the viewers would be like, oh my God, it's Mark Maron. But I think a lot of people would be like, what are you... What is that? But to get Simmons back, I think is yeah. wonderful. I mean, he's got the WTF podcast and he was also in the movie Joker, famously. That's true, yeah. He was friend to Robert De Niro, mm-hmm. famously shot in the head in that movie. <laughs> so yeah, it kind of leaves everything up in the air about what's next for Spider-Man if his identity is out there. Yeah. Which it has been multiple times before. Also, like, just get someone else in the Spider-Man suit and go, look, I'm here and he's there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Look at him, he's jumping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's jumping, and I'm not jumping. I'm Peter Parker, and I'm not jumping. That's not Daredevil. That's me. Oh, not me. I'm me. That's Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. not Daredevil. But he doesn't know any guys who can jump, so. I guess he doesn't. Yeah. They're all dead. <laughs> Anyways, it's time for Spider-Home Trivia from Man. This is the trivia section of the show. Love this. Here we go. I just got a few here. Um, so this is the first MCU movie not to have a cameo by Stan Lee since he died. Oh. Didn't film one. Though I feel like we're rapidly approaching the point where we're going to see a, a 3D scan Stanley. Oh, coming scan in. Stan. Scan Stan coming it's in typhus. going, hello everybody, remember me, I'm dead. <laughs> no. Is that what he's going to say every time? He's going to have to. Yeah, I guess. Just give it real to life. Yeah. Just a bit of reality in these movies, please. That's, we've all had some fun today, but remember, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> also, apparently Jake Gyllenhaal. He loved the costume of Mysterio, right? Okay. So there's a scene where he's like, somebody get this stupid costume off me. But apparently he insisted for a lot of this of just like, no, nah, I want to wear it. I want to wear the big stupid costume. Huh, and it know. is a big stupid costume. I like how stupid it is. I feel like Gyllenhaal is a little bit like a Ryan Gosling. He just wants to do different roles yeah. just to to try it out. Like he wants to do an action movie or a thriller movie in a... An ambulance Michael, movie. And I was going to say an ambulance movie yeah. and a superhero movie just to try it out. Will he do another one? A very unlikely. Yeah, maybe. Well... He could technically come back as Mysterio if he is dead mm. because a team make Mysterio. He's mostly holograms in that's that. That's true. Know? So, yeah. And I guess technically he is in the next movie for a little bit. That's true also, yes. Also, I mean, I'm sure we talked about this, but Tobey Maguire was nearly recast in Spider-Man 2 and they were going to pick Jake Gyllenhaal. That was oh, the, right, that's that was true, the situation yeah. for a time. Mm. And also, of course, Mason, and you knew this, the, the Netherlands tulip field scene was filmed in a grass field in the UK. Yuck. Uh, and it required two million digital tulips. And watching this again, I'm like, oh yeah, that's really noticeable. I hope I picked up on that at the time. Embarrassing if not, Mason. Now, um, the budget of this was $160 million. And even though it was post-Endgame, which is technically where we are still, (laughs) it had a return of $1.132 billion. This is the first Spider-Man movie to make over a billion dollars. Nice for them. Exactly. Pretty nice. Must be nice. Yeah, must be nice, I'd Mm. imagine. Having a billion bucks. Yeah. (laughs) Show your friends. Don't (laughs) give them any. Just show them. Have a look at this. Yeah, yeah. That's for me. I'm mm. going to lounge around on it. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's, you know, there is still that momentum from the MCU. You're still getting characters popping up and reference that you, you know, know and love. And Spidey's, you know, Spidey, and Spider-Man. Spidey is, a, is a known quantity. He's, the, he's the, one of the most loved characters in, in, in pop culture history. Of course, people are going to want to see more adventures unless they're very, very confusing and, <laughs> and, and poorly thought out. Yeah. Next week. Ooh, controversial maybe. No, not really. You're a, I think, hate, you're a I, hater. I am a hater, but I think the tide has turned on that movie. Okay. I still like it. I haven't rewatched it yet, so we'll see. Anyways, if you do want to see that, when we come back and talk about all the Spider-Men coming together and hugging each other, you can actually head over to BigSandwich.co. That's like our private Patreon where there's early videos, bonus podcasts, we do movie commentaries, we do video game Let's Plays. You can look at our billion dollars. You can look at it. You can look at it, mm. but that's all. That's right. Yeah. And if you're lucky, I'll leave it to you when I'm dead. <laughs> One of you... Oh, not me. Not you. Oh. You've got your own billion dollars, I assume, from oh. somewhere else. I don't know. Oh, yes. I don't know what you're up to. Sure, 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 sure. Or, of course, we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. That comes out every Monday. Of course, we're going to be talking about Madam Web, the biggest oh. movie of the year, no doubt. Excited? No. More spam. That is more spam. It's a big year for spam. We know that. We're getting, a, we're getting three spam movies. We are getting three spams. Mm. It's the spam naissance. <laughs> Finally. We're finally in the spum. <laughs> Folks, hashtag spum naissance. <laughs>
Get it out there. Uh, that podcast, of course, is available on Apple, iTunes, Spotify. It's got its own YouTube channel, et cetera, and so forth. Thank you so much to Ben and Lawrence for the edit. Thank you, Ben and Lawrence. We'll see you for the next one where you're going to get a big hater coming in hot. <laughs> Can't wait. Okay, goodbye. I got theories. I'm sure you do. Yeah, grab that jammy, guys. We'll see you next week. Yeah.